Well, hello and welcome back to my channel. My name's Sophie, I'm a teacher, coach, and mixed media artist, and I'm newly discovering the journey through sketchbooks. I've refound my love of creativity after years of being in a kind of creative desert, if you like, of trying lots of things that haven't really got me to where I want to go. I finally found something completely different from what I was doing before that I absolutely love. And I think this is my new future direction. And I'd love to share that journey with you alongside, of course, sharing the usual business topics that I share on this channel. So I hope you do enjoy the mixture of art that's coming up and business. I think right now I have a lot of videos on this channel for you to watch all about marketing and sales and making a living from your art and social media and productivity. If that's something that you really want to watch, there's plenty of videos for you to watch. And for those of you that are interested to go behind the scenes in my studio, in my own creative work, and now sharing my love of sketchbooking, I have so, so many, I've re-woken up an old Instagram account, that's Sophie Mihir Art. So if you want to follow my journey pictorially, please follow me over there as well. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about why I've decided to commit to a year-long daily sketching practice. Yes, you've heard me correctly, a year-long daily sketching practice. Now you might say to me, oh goodness me, Sophie, that's an enormous challenge, and you would be right. But right now, I feel like it's something that's easy in flow, and I'm doing it anyway. So why not actually make a challenge and see where I can get to? So I've been, I've been sketching every day for the last month and it feels so in flow and gives me so much joy. And I've already developed and grown, of course, during those 30 days. So my question, I suppose, is, well, how much could I grow and change and develop over a year? So I want to share three things in this video, kind of what my challenge is going to look like what are the benefits of doing a year-long challenge and how you might like to get involved as well. So first up, how is this gonna look for me? Well, very often when you hear people talk about a year-long challenge, they will then say, oh, I'm only doing it Monday to Friday or Monday to Saturday. And you know what? It doesn't really matter so long as you've made the commitment you stay consistent and you stay on track for what you said you're gonna do. So what feels good for me is the Monday to Friday. So I'm gonna to commit to doing Monday to Friday. So I think for the next 12 months, that gives me 261 days. Um, yeah, I have worked that out, <laughs> which somehow doesn't seem very much at all, but anyway, that's all good. And if I happen to do anything extra at the weekend, then that's a bonus, right? I'm gonna do things like timed sketches, and I really love that. I follow a few sketchbook and illustrator artists at the moment, so I really like what they're doing in terms of putting a timer on 15, 20 minutes. It's something I used to do when I was teaching back in the day with the students, um, and I think that it's gonna serve very well now, because what can happen is you can just start your sketch, and before you know it, you've actually created a finished drawing, and that's really not the idea here. The idea is to capture the moment and get something that's a little bit quicker, and if you want to go in a bit more detail, then maybe take it out the sketchbook and put it somewhere else, right? So I'm gonna do timed, and I'm gonna write at the bottom whether it was a five minute, 10 minute, 15, I think 20 is probably gonna be the maximum amount of time that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try lots of different media. Now at the moment, I've got already quite a large amount. I had a large amount before. I was a collector of art materials. Don't forget to leave me a comment below if you too are a collector of art materials. Do you have a studio stuff full of things that you're not using? Well, here's a real benefit, right? I collected a lot of things over the years. Now I'm just blowing the dust off them and going, Look at that fantastic set of amazing watercolor pencils that my children used at school and I kept them. And now I think, wow, that's quite a, that's quite a good start, right? I've added to that over the last few weeks um, and I actually have something arriving today. I've just had a notification. So that's super exciting. So yes, I'll be trying out lots of different media. I've got a whole long list of extra things that I would like to try that I don't have. So I have a little shopping list. So I'll keep you enrolled in what I'm buying and how it looks like. And then I'm gonna be exploring different topics. It's very interesting though, because having already done this for 30 days, I found that I've gravitated into the complete opposite of what I used to paint when I painted large semi-abstract canvas. 
you can probably see the bottom of one above here in the shot and that's a Cornish St Ives scene on a really large canvas that took me a really long period of time and you know what now I've discovered that I don't even use the same color palette I'm actually inspired by what's around me. Finally, <laughs> it's taken so long. If you know me well, you're gonna laugh at that point in the video. But I'm actually loving greens. Green is my new favorite color at the moment. We'll see what I say in a year's time, right? I'm sure it will have changed. But at the moment, I'm drawing trees and plants and flowers and the wildflowers, and I'm drawing houses and buildings. Um, I've also got a sketchbook um, that I'll link to um, above here that you can watch that was my first one from the Europe trip and I'm already halfway through the second book um, which is predominantly Sicily in Italy so I'm kind of doing that working back on that as well and once that's finished I'll do a flip through video of that as well so it won't be just greens it'll be buildings it'll be wherever I am at the time and I'm going to be open to exploring all different sorts of topics right because that's how we grow ultimately and I really feel that by doing this, it's gonna push me outside of my comfort zone, right? You know how it's easy as us creators just to stay doing what we do? Well, I know how to do those, I'll do those. But actually, I want to go back to drawing still lives. I used to love those when I was way back as a young person. I used to do a lot of still lives. So I'm gonna try those again. I'm gonna try people that I'm really not very good at. But the more you do it, the better you get, right? So I'm gonna get out of the comfort zone and try sketching things I wouldn't normally sketch. One of my goals that I've written down for this challenge is to really loosen up. I know that by nature I can end up being quite detail and quite line orientated. I think that goes back to my original training back in the day. But I want to be looser and freer. So I aim to make a mess. And that's something, again, that creatively I don't tend to do, let alone in a sketchbook. So that's the goal is to be looser and to make a mess. So again, I'll let you know how that goes. I'm definitely going to be inspired and use other people's prompt lists. So once you start in this world of sketchbooking, you soon find that there are a lot of people out there who provide you with prompts and you can tag them and use their hashtag and you can get involved in a month of a certain theme or perhaps a week of different ideas. Because at the end of the day, 261 days is a lot of time for you to come up with different sketching things. So you might just as well uh, use other people's prompts, right? So I'm definitely going to be doing that. I'm also going to be making up some of my own as well. And you know what's really, really great? I'm going to be posting every day. I'm doing it at the moment anyway. I've started. So my Instagram at the moment looks very blue with boats at the bottom. And then there's a change post. And now it's my drawing and my sketching. So it's going to be a little bit slow to get going. But you know, this is the thing with social media. You just keep going. So if there's anybody out there who's reviving an old Instagram account, so long as it's the same audience and the same type of topic that you're posting, you should be good. You just continue with your engagement, your posting, you just keep doing, and eventually it takes back off again, all right? So that's what we're doing there. So number two, what are the benefits? So obviously quite a few of the things I've mentioned in number one are also the benefits for you if you decide to take up the challenge. So firstly, massive improvement, right? When you do something consistently day in, day out, you are going to get better. So if you are starting out or you feel like you've probably got some room for improvement in your art, then a massive benefit of doing something like this, obviously, is that you're going to improve no matter what, right? Honing your style. Now, this is something that I get asked an awful lot about. You know, I'm not sure if I found my style. You know, should I adapt my style to make it contemporary and saleable? And oh my goodness me, I've spoken about that before in other videos. At the end of the day, you want to find what's you. You want to develop your style. And if you become great at marketing, then you will sell what you're making. But we're not talking about selling at this point. We're talking about the benefits of doing something day in, day out. And for sure, honing your style is going to come out of, especially by doing a year long practice. So I have a look that I've had probably since I started drawing um, seriously as a late teen but I'd like to see where that could go because I'm really interested in stretching this and perhaps going into illustration. So I want to know what could happen if I did a year long practice, you know, with an illustrator kind of thought in my head. So honing the style is definitely a benefit of doing a challenge like this. Of course, trying out lots of different ideas. 
So if you're that person who has got all these things running around in the head that they'd like to do, then a sketchbook practice is the place for all those ideas. It's perfect, right? Staving off the boredom. Now this might sound strange, but I know myself that sometimes there's a finite period of time that I want to spend on a certain piece. And by doing the time sketches that I love in the sketchbook, there's no chance to get bored. You're constantly on the roll for the next one and the next one and the next day and the next day. So if again you find that you're doing the same sort of thing day in, day out, and it's not giving you the creativity and the satisfaction that you're looking for, then staving off the boredom would definitely be a massive benefit for you. What about journaling your life? Now I know there's a bit of a difference between sketchbooking and art journaling, right, in inverted commas. In sketchbooking, you really are just developing your creative practice, you're drawing, you're painting, you're, you're doing either representational or non-representational. Journal perhaps has got a lot more writing in it. Uh, it might even have sort of stuck in, I don't know, tickets, photos, things perhaps from your life, from your travels if you make a travel journal but there's no reason that you can't mix the two right you can still be sketching and write some things about it and just create the book the way that you would like to for me one of the major benefits is content for social media how many of you watching are scratching your head tearing your hair out saying sophie how do i find enough content for my instagram or facebook page well you're going to be drawing daily there's your content right you don't have to think about it anymore you do your sketchbook practice you take some photos you make a post and if you're clever you make some video as well so that you can make a little mini reel perhaps and see if you can get a little bit more engagement and grow that um, account a little bit faster so that leads us on to growth when you do something over a long period of time we know that you improve you grow you're likely going to grow your social media following you're going to grow your art business as well because likely you won't just be doing that you'll be making product or you'll be making an income stream you'll be developing the business so I would say definitely one of the benefits of doing this is ultimately it is going to grow your art business so these are amazing benefits of doing something simple like where's my sketchbook Where's my prop picking up one of these every day allocating 20 minutes and having fun in here I mean who doesn't want to do that right so you too can do the same. So number three, let's look at what that might look like for you if you want to join me on this challenge. So the first thing you'll need to do is gather up some empty sketchbooks. Now, if you're anything like me, you've got a pile, I can't even show you the shelf over there, I have piles of sketchbooks, some of which have things in them, some of which don't have anything in them, and some of them have one or two pages at the beginning, which is easy enough to tear out, and there you have a brand new sketchbook. So one will do a startup, but if you have a little pile of them, because sometimes I find I want to use um, a landscape one or a portrait one or a square one, depending on what theme or what I'm doing on the day. So sketchbooks number one. Number two, obviously materials. So if you're a working artist, you'll likely have a pile of materials. So you want to think about pencils, pens, markers, watercolors, gouache, small brushes, um, things that were easy for you to transport if you decide to go outside and do it like that. Anything that goes kind of easy into a bag or a box. And if you're like me, you'll be purchasing new things. I think they're behind me. Piles of more pencils and crayons and yummy things. But you can start off with what you've got. So number two would be materials. And number three here, now you really need to decide how long you're going to do this challenge for. Are you going to match me with my year-long challenge and start with me? I'm going to start officially on that 1st of October. Are you going to start then with me? Or are you going to say, do you know what, I'm going to try it for 30 days and then I'll have a look how that feels. Or maybe 60 days or even 90 days. Now for some people, initially that seems daunting. Oh my God, I've got to do the same thing for 90 days. We're talking 20 minutes out of your day plus a few minutes to take the photograph. You could say 30 minutes. 20 minutes to do your sketch and 10 minutes to take some photo or fit video and make an Instagram post. I mean, that's insane, right? That's crazy. So 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, whatever you're going to do, or you could do what I'm going to do, which is that 261 days, or you could say I'm going to do every single day 365. Doesn't matter. Choose one and commit to it. Then you just need to block out your, your 30 minutes every day, right? I think it's a great idea to do it first thing before you get into anything else because otherwise the day can go by and then you haven't done it, right? But on the other hand, if you are an afternoon or an evening person and you're creative, you're most creative then, then that's what you're, when you're going to do it. 
So make sure to follow me over on my art Instagram, that's Sophie Mahia Art. I'll put a link below this video for that account because I'm going to be sharing, I'm already sharing, and I'm gonna be sharing obviously my posts every day. I'm also gonna share prompts and helps and tips and ideas for those of you that would like to join me on the challenge. So what do you do if you want to join the challenge? Well, number one, you could either message me below in the comments below this video. You can shoot me a direct message on Instagram or you could just start. And then I'd love for you to tag me in your post so that I can see what you're doing. And you can use this hashtag that I've created specially, Sophie Sketch Daily. Sophie Sketch Daily. Not Sophie's Sketch, just Sophie Sketch Daily. Also, that's in the description below. Um, and obviously, as soon as I start on the first, I'll be using that in every single post as well. So if you want to save that hashtag and follow that particular hashtag, then obviously you'll see all my posts and anybody else who's using that as well. Kind of exciting, right? That gives us an opportunity to grow together. And of course, I would like to know how long you're committing for, for your sketchbook challenge. So to sum up, if you're really looking to improve your own art, you really would like to get into a routine with your creative practice. You want to grow your social media following and ultimately you want to grow your art business by doing the simple thing of 30 minutes a day doing some sketching, then you're in the right place. This is the video for you. I wanna hear from you if you're gonna sign up. I'm gonna sign up. I'm gonna, I wanna hear from you that you're committed and how long you're gonna do it for. Don't forget to tag me, use those hashtags. And of course, to look out for more videos that are going to be helping you along the way. And don't forget to check out this one if you haven't already. And that's my sketchbook tour from the first part of my Europe trip this summer for the UK, winter for Australia, this July and August. And the second one is coming along nicely too. And once I finish that, I'll make a video tour through that book as well. All right. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Bye bye.